Thank you very much. So today I wanted to return to the uh, function that uh, was defined yesterday, and uh, in particular to uh, look at a problem which has its origin in a paper of Siegel in 1929. So um, you will have seen throughout the lectures that uh, we very often uh, in transcendence, uh, study the exceptional set of a function, uh, namely the set of algebraic points at which a function takes algebraic values. So uh, Siegel's question was precisely to study the set of algebraic numbers at which the hypergeometric function takes algebraic values. And here one can put q bar, but I'm actually going to put uh, Q bar star. Um, uh, in fact, one can show that, that the zeros of the uh, hypergeometric function are transcendental. So, but to simplify my life, I'm going to put uh, Q bar star. And by work of uh, Wolfhard, uh, so published in the Invencionis in 1988, it turns out that just like for the J function, This exceptional set corresponds to a set of complex multiplication points. <coughs> so we have to uh, appreciate why that's true. Well, first of all, I should say that we're assuming that um, ABC are rational numbers, so that means the series expansion of, of f about the origin will have coefficients of uh, rational numbers. And yesterday I defined the monogamy group, and I'm also going to assume that the um, monogamy group, which depends of course on ABC, and you'll remember we had those alternate parameters mu, I'm going to assume that this is infinite. So there are cases when the monogamy group is finite. That was the uh, list uh, uh, corresponding to the spherical triangles uh, calculated by Schwarz. But in that case, uh, f is an algebraic function, and uh, the question isn't, isn't interesting, because uh, you always get algebraic values at algebraic points. So uh, the reason one can use transcendence is because of the Euler integral representation of this function. So I'm going to write it somewhat differently to what I did yesterday. I wrote it as a ratio of integrals from 1 to infinity. And now I'm going to say, well, there's some constant uh, in the non-zero algebraic numbers such that I can write the hypergeometric function as a ratio of periods defined uh, over q bar. And uh, this gamma is going to be um, some cycle called a Pockhammer cycle between the points 1 and infinity. So it's a closed loop that actually goes around uh, 1 and infinity twice. And uh, if I try to, to draw this, I will get into a, into, into a mess. But you can think of it as a uh, cycle on this curve that we defined depending on x, which was w to the n equals mu to the n mu 0, mu minus 1 to the n mu 1, mu minus x to the n mu 2. We're now, instead of using the ABC notation, I'm using the notation in terms of the mu's. And uh, to go from uh, 1 to infinity, from 1 to infinity to um, 
a loop around one and infinity. You just have to take into account the, the change of branch of this function. And it's easy to go between the two. So you can actually think of the integral from one to infinity as being part of the period, if you like. So, so one certainly has a representation of that form. And so I'm going to make uh, the usual assumptions on the mu's to simplify life. So the rational numbers uh, between 0 and 1. And I introduce uh, mu3 such that uh, the sum of the mu's is 2. And so what we have on the bottom is going to be a period on the curve that you get when you put x equal to uh, 0. And uh, this will be a curve of a different genus now. And I'm also going to assume that, um, uh, that this uh, differential form is uh, holomorphic. on x of 0. This is not necessary to make this assumption, but I want to uh, think uh, in terms of periods um, of differential forms of the first kind, because that's uh, the, the theorems that I've stated work, work just for those. But one can also deal with um, uh, the periods of differential forms of the, of the second kind in an analogous way. So I just, but I just want to uh, restrict to this case. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, assume now that n is prime, which is also unnecessary, but simplifies things. And the abelian varieties, uh, therefore, that you look at associated to these two curves are the Jacobian. And you remember that we had an action of... Um, the pth root of unity on our curve, and we have consequently an action on the Jacobians. And um, so we can view uh, this uh, cyclotomic field as being contained in the endomorphism algebras. Uh, also at x equal to 0. And how this uh, field is represented uh, in the endomorphism algebras will uh, precisely be given by uh, the dimensions of those eigenspaces of a differential form that I talked about in the first lecture. Okay. So what is the idea? So... Um, So in, in his um, paper, uh, Wolfhard observes two things. First of all, if uh, x is algebraic, so that's part of what it is to be an exceptional set. Uh, you're dealing with curves defined over q bar. Therefore, you're dealing with abelian varieties defined over q bar. So you can apply your transcendence results. And moreover, if this number is algebraic, that means that uh, the period um, defined over q bar of the first kind here is proportional to the period defined over q bar of the first kind here by some proportionality constant in q bar star. So that means there is a relation between uh, a period of the first kind on this curve and a period of the first kind on this different curve. So, um, so applying uh, the Wusthold's machine that I talked about in my second lecture, the Jacobian. So, if X is in the exceptional set, uh, the Jacobian of uh, x mu x has to share 
up to us how to meet. A simple factor of this degree. And so what one can, uh, one can show, so it, this Jacobian turns out to be a dimension uh, p minus 1 over 2. And the degree of the cyclotomic field is um, p minus 1. So you can actually show, uh, this may not be a simple <coughs> abelian uh, variety necessarily, but you can show that it's a power of a simple abelian variety with complex multiplication. So... It's an abelian variety with complex multiplication. And then, uh, so, so because this is a power of a simple one and you have an action of the roots of unity, uh, you can actually deduce that uh, the Jacobian of x mu x has to have up to isogeny a factor, which is actually all of the Jacobian of x mu of zero. And then you'll have a complementary factor and the dimension of that complementary factor is also p minus 1 over 2, and you have an action of the roots of unity. So A prime is actually an abelian variety with complex multiplication and does not depend on x in this particular case. Okay. So you can think of, uh, therefore, of a map from uh, from the space where your x lives to um, the Siegel modular variety. Uh, for abelian varieties of dimension p minus 1. And you consider the image over here. So um, you consider the closure of the image over here, and you can show, in fact, that you get an algebraic curve over in the Siegel modular space, which corresponds to um, uh, the image the closure of the image of the regular points. And that map is precisely x goes to the point on the uh, Siegel space which corresponds to the isomorphism classes of these Jacobians. So such a thing is called a period map. So um, the points of the exceptional set correspond to points corresponding to abelian varieties with CM, so complex multiplication points, uh, which are all isogenous to a fixed one. And uh, Wolfheit actually shows uh, that the converse is true, that once you have um, uh, a decomposition uh, like this, then it corresponds to a point in the exceptional set. So you're left with counting this intersection. Uh, now, um, uh, in a paper with uh, Gustholz, um Gustavs and I actually uh, noticed that uh, this was um, exactly the type of problem being considered by people uh, studying the Andre Orr conjecture. And a little bit a after our paper, there was in fact um, a paper published of Adik Sovin and Yafeyev in the Annals of Maths, which is, which is the following. So it's related to the Andre Orr conjecture that I had mentioned. So it says, let Z be uh, an irreducible algebraic curve in a Shimura variety S. So you can just think of the Siegel modular variety here. 
and they don't use at all the classical language of Shimura. Uh, so, I mean, they don't need uh, in their paper to consider abelian varieties at all. But I'm going to just consider the case where the Shimura variety is actually a modulized space for abelian varieties. So then the intersection of Z with the CM points of S in a fixed isogeny class. So it's this extra condition which is added on to the original Andre Ort conjecture and the reason that you don't have to use the Riemann hypothesis in the proof. Uh, so uh, is infinite if and only if So officially, the result says if and only if the Z is of Hodge type. So you can think of a Z as being, um, so this is a little rough now. So if a Z is the quotient of um, H by an arithmetic group. This is not the correct way to state the theorem that's done. So basically, the idea is that you can only have uh, this intersection infinite if Z itself is the moduli space for a family of abelian varieties with extra structure. And so uh, we have to go back to uh, the relation to uh, Z, uh, the relation of Z to our monotony group, and it's fairly straightforward to convert this into the condition that. The monotomy group is arithmetic. So one gets, um, so to summarize, one gets uh, the following theorem. Uh, suppose, so suppose ABC are rational and the monotomy group is infinite, then the exceptional set. Oh, now I have C, so this is bad. Is infinite if and only if the corresponding monogamy group is arithmetic. And whether it's infinite or finite, the points of E correspond, just like for the J function, to certain complex modification points. Uh, so in a Siegel modular variety. Okay, so um, for example, If you look at the uh, non so first of all, I should say, if you look at the arithmetic group uh, SL to Z, so remember that's the triangle group with signature 2, 3, infinity. So now I'm using the PQR instead of the mu, so you have ABC, uh, mu, or PQR. So they, they all are related to each other. Uh, then the corresponding hypergeometric function is f 11 over 12, 11 over 12, 4 over 3, x. So the result tells you that the uh, exceptional set of this, uh, of this function is infinite, and moreover that the um, elements of the exceptional set all correspond to some abelian variety with complex multiplication. And there are, in fact, results on um, 
such uh, special values due to uh, uh, Boyka's involvement. So I don't know if this came up in, in Fritz's lectures. And this was, was pursued also by a student of uh, Rustov's, uh, Ashina. On the other hand, if you look at someone not arithmetic, So an example is the Hecker triangle group of signature 2, 5, infinity. Then the hypergeometric function, which uh, comes up, is this one. And so the theorem is going to tell you that there are only finitely many algebraic x such that this function takes an algebraic value. So um, there's no reason a, a priori to think that this, the series here behaves differently to the series here. Uh, and I actually don't think that Siegel had for, foreseen this distinction between the arithmetic and non-arithmetic case, and that insight is, of course, due to uh, Volta. <coughs> so I'm dangerously ahead, but never mind. Um, I can always come back. So... So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, extensions of this work. So um, in some more recent papers uh, in common with uh, Marvin Tretkoff, so one of the good things about doing papers with a spouse is you get to write, to write your name in full, which isn't done usually, So, and myself. And uh, two of the papers are actually also with my student, um, Dave Rousseau. And th they can be found, so uh, there are three papers. Uh, one appeared in the uh, International Mathematical Research Notices. One will appear in, in Forum Mathematica. And uh, one will appear in the International Journal of Number Theory, which is a fine journal, uh, by the way, for which I'm an editor. Anyway, so, <laughs> but you can find all of them on my website. Actually, you can find two on my website. Uh, the third one I haven't posted yet, but I, I will do that when I get back. So basically, the project was to um, extend uh, Wolfhard's method to other functions, and there are essentially two directions um, discussed in these papers. So one, I think, occurred uh, this, this morning in Fritz's lectures is to see what can be done for the apple Loricella function. So that's the generalization of the hypergeometric function to, to uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the, the high dimensional case. So, um, so it's a function on uh, c to the n instead of just c. So, uh, so a special case of this is the classical function. When n equals when okay, you know this n when n equals one, <coughs> and another direction is to study the Tissot Hochheimer function, and what happens there is so for the Gauss hypergeometric function you have a second order differential equation with three regular singular points. So uh, for the Tissot-Pockhammer case, you have an uh, uh, ordinary differential equation. So it's actually a function on, on C of order N with N plus 1 regular singular points. And the um, going up in dimension here turns out to make things uh, quite a good deal more complicated. And this complication is still reflected in the Tissot-Pockheimer case because they arise uh, from uh, the apple loricella case when you specialize all the one of the variables. So you still see uh, the same kind of complications coming up here as, as here. So let me uh, give a little bit of an idea 
of what happens. So uh, just to simplify things, I'm going to look at the case uh, of the apple function. So, but everything I say uh, goes through uh, for the Loricella ones. So this is the case to variable case. And the Loricella is the But it turns out that the uh, extra complication uh, for going up from uh, uh, to the apple case uh, is also the same type of complication as you enter uh, uh, as you come across when when you go up to the Loricella case. So um, the critical passage is from the Gauss case to the apple case to see what the differences are. So so the apple function. Uh, has a serious expansion about the origin. So this is actually just one of, uh, of several functions uh, that Apple uh, constructed. And we're going to assume again that A, B, B prime, and C are, ra are rational. And now your coefficients generalize um, the ones uh, for the Gauss case. So, and again, uh, Wn is W times W plus 1 all the way up to W plus N minus 1. Okay, so uh, in the beginning things go pretty much as before. So this function, uh, so um, again you can associate uh, to the A, B, B prime, C, you can associate uh, mu's, mu 0, mu 1, mu 2, mu 3, and now there's an extra one, mu 4. And the assumptions that the mu's are between 0 and 1, and once again, they're going to sum uh, to 2, ensure that the monogamy group is contained in PU21. So it acts on the complex 2 ball. And so this is what, what Delina Mostow call a ball 5 2 ball. So uh, the monogamy arises because uh, this um, function now satisfies a system of second-order partial differential equations with regular singularities now along uh, lines because they're one dimension higher, so it's not points anymore. So it's along these lines. So your space of... I don't know if this can. Okay, so your space of regular points, so, and this is a cube. So, uh, space of regular points are now the uh, x, y in p1 cross p1, such that x is not equal to 0, 1, and infinity y is not equal to 0, 1, and infinity, and x is not equal to y. That, so that is your space of regular points uh, for your system of partial differential equations. And just like before, uh, we have an associated uh, monogamy groups, which depends on the choice of the parameters that we're assuming is in PU21. OK, so the theorem that we get is very similar oh so to find this okay so I should say to define the exceptional set uh, that's just going to be the set of x y in q intersect 
p bar squared such that fx bar is in p bar star. So it's the same. So the exceptional set of fxy is a risky dense, so that replaces infinite in the one-dimensional case. So you can think of q as being in p1 cross cross p1, so uh, I would say just a risky dense in q. If and only if the monotony group is arithmetic in uh, PU21. Now, only if is because uh, we come across the same uh, difficulty as Volfite did in that we need uh, to know something about um, not the distribution of complex multiplication points anymore, but a more complicated distribution question, which is still uh, a conjecture. So, so we're led to this modular and interesting problem. in the theory of tumor operators. So once again, it, it's interesting that, um, so the people who's, who work on this type of problem uh, have nothing to do with transcendence at all, and it's once again interesting that there's this interplay between uh, the two fields. So uh, what happens, so again, uh, so I'm going to, um, so the notations get sort of more unwieldy. So, but again, you have an Euler integral representation this is meant to be a W of this function. Where W to the n is, uh, so is of the form u to the n u0, u minus 1 to the n u1, u minus x to the n u2, u minus y to the n u3, where now the mu's are related to a, b, b prime c uh, by a simple formula. So that's why it's useful to have the mu's because uh, they correspond exactly to exponents. And once again, n will correspond to the denominator you need, uh, the, the integer that you need to uh, clear out the denominator. And once again, I'm going to assume that n is, is prime, which is not necessary. So, um, so this again, uh, so this now I've written it as an integral from 1 to infinity rather than an integral around a cycle. But it's proportional to an integral around the cycle, so it is. A, so this is a, is proportional to uh, a period of a differential form defined over Q bar when x and y are both in Q bar, as they will be in the exceptional set. And similarly, this um, corresponds to a, a differential form uh, of the first kind, and uh, this this can be thought of as a period. So now we're going to have a family of curves, which is a two-parameter family, with a fixed curve corresponding to uh, what appears in the in the denominator. And again, um, we can look at Jacobians. And again, we have an action of uh, roots of unity. Uh, because of the w to the so because of the w to the p here on the left hand side, so we'll once again have <coughs> a 
an action of the roots of unity, and we know uh, how the um, <coughs> the roots of unity, uh, how the, the differential forms of the first kind uh, decompose into eigenspaces with respect to this action of the roots of unity by a formula which is similar to the one that we had before. So uh, all of this is the same. So uh, now comes the difference. So we're again going to apply uh, the Wusthold's type uh, result that says you can only have, once you're on a billion varieties defined over Q bar, you can only have uh, the periods on those abelian varieties uh, proportional up to a constant defined over, uh, a constant in Q bar. So f x y is in Q bar means that these are proportional. There's a linear relation defined over Q bar between them. It means that the Jacobians have to share have to share a common factor. So. Now, we're kind of in luck with this one because this one really, uh, so if you think about it, put x and y equal to zero, um, this has the form uh, of the curve uh, from the one-dimensional case when you put x equal to zero. So this is essentially the same type of abelian variety on the denominator as you got before. And in particular, this Jacobian has complex modification. And looking at the action of the roots of unity, you can still deduce that uh, once x, y is in the exceptional set, this Jacobian has the other Jacobian as a piece, but now your complementary factor is going to be bigger. So if so, if uh, if n is prime, uh, here you have dimension three over two <coughs> p minus one. Here you have dimension one half p minus one. And complex multiplication, but here you have dimension p minus one. So you know that the cyclotomic field is contained in the endomorphism algebra of this one. Uh, but the dimension here is uh, twice what it needs to be for there to be complex multiplication. So. There's no need uh, for this abelian variety to have complex multiplication. And what's more, its isogeny class can depend on x and y. So the fact that it didn't in the one-dimensional case was the reason the dimension we just happened to get these two factors of sigma type. So um, so what you're uh, led to now is um, is that the exceptional set, so that the exceptional set so I'm writing again what I've got up here, corresponds to a decomposition up to isogeny, of course, of J mu x y with J mu 0, 0, a factor. But not necessarily CN. Okay, so uh, this is an additional uh, difficulty. Uh, so, uh, so we have to look at what we've got. So again, you consider you can consider uh, the regular points send a regular point to um, the isomorphism class of its Jacobian, uh, but you have to be a, a little more careful here, um, you don't want the whole uh, Siegel space, you actually want 
a Shemura of variety which takes into account um, the action of the roots of unity. So this in general will be, will be a smaller moduli space than the whole of the Siegel space. And S, you actually want to be the smallest Shemura of variety. Containing Z, which is the closure of the image of Q. So the smallest Shimura variety containing a variety is called uh, its um, Shimura closure. So, um, and the Shimura closure is represented by SZ. Uh, so you, you need to sort of keep more control over what's happening. So the idea is that uh, the points in the exceptional set are going to correspond to S prime, where S prime is a smaller Shimura variety. Then S, because uh, there's more structure uh, because of the extra decomposition structure of this Jacobi. Okay, so uh, you're led to looking back at, at um, Shimura's papers on uh, Shimura varieties of PEL type and looking closely at the representation of um, the roots of unity on the differential one forms. And so what you're able to see is that um, essentially you have Z equal to SC. Oh, so I, I should really uh, put in an extra step. So what you're asking is when is the intersection of Z with the echo orbit, now that gets put in because you're talking about up to isogeny, of S prime, Zariski dense in Z. So again, by looking carefully at the uh, representations, you're, you're able to say uh, something. Well, first of all, what happens is in the arithmetic case, you essentially get that Z is SC. And then there are general facts that will say that uh, then that this, uh, um, uh, this orbit is dense. So the difficult part, again, is the non-arithmetic case. So again, doing a little bit of um, <coughs> representation, uh, uh, looking at the representations of the roots of unity, you're able to get an upper bound on the dimension of S prime. And this upper bound is uh, sufficiently good that you can say that Z intersect the orbit of S prime, so the Hecker orbit of S prime is not so risky dense in Z. If, so you can actually express it in, in a weaker form, but I want to express it in this form to show the link with uh, something which is being done in the theory of Shimura varieties. If the intersection of Z with the union of all Shimura sub-varieties of S of dimension S 
strictly less. Then the dimension of S minus 2 is not Zariski dense. In Z. So actually, one, one can say something uh, somewhat. Uh, you don't quite need uh, all of this, but I want to state it like this because this is exactly corresponds to a conjecture made by Pink and Zilber in the context of things which are called mixture moral varieties. where they propose a conjecture that simultaneously uh, generalizes the André Ort and a conjecture um, in Diophantine ana analysis called the, the manon mumford con conjecture. So uh, if you work in the mixed case, you can say things for Shimura varieties, but you can also say analogous uh, things for abelian varieties and semi-abelian varieties. So they have a setup where they capture um, these conjectures. And precisely, this one of the conjectures is. <coughs> so this is to show that the transcendence question leads naturally to something which is entirely uh, in a different uh, type of theory altogether. So let me just state it. Um, Z is a, a sub an irreducible algebraic uh, sub variety of a single module space. Then. The intersection of Z with the union of all special. So, a special sub variety, uh, you can think of it just being as a moduli space for some abelian varieties with extra structure. Special sub varieties of dimension small enough, and small enough is strictly less than the co dimension of Z in its Shimura closure, so uh, the smallest sub variety of the Siegel moduli space that contains um, Z. So this intersection is not so risky dense. So one's led to one's led to this um, this question, and as, as I say, there are a lot of people uh, working on the um, the abelian variety and semi abelian variety side of the, the mixed Shimura variety language. So I just wanted to conclude by saying a little word about uh, Tissot Pockhammer. Uh, so there's an interesting thing that comes up in the Tissot Pockhammer case. Because what we have in the denominator here is always something which lives on an abelian variety with complex modification. Uh, when we do the tissot pochhammer case, uh, we're led to looking at the Hecker orbit of a point which does not have complex modification. So uh, our exceptional set corresponds to... Um, a billion varieties isogenous to a given one, but the given one is no longer uh, with complex modification, and so one's uh, left with looking at some variety intersect. So once again, this Hecker orbit just means uh, basically isogeny, the Hecker orbit of a point. 
and asking when uh, that is so risky dense. Well, actually, a, a z will be a curve, so we're kind of just asking when this is infinite. And there's once again a very interesting uh, conjecture of uh, pink, which is actually a special case of the conjecture I just wrote up, that says that this happens if and only if z is something called weakly special. So if you're weakly special, you're not quite a Shomura variety or something a little bit less. And uh, technically what it means is uh, you're something of this form. So you have a map between Shomura varieties. And then you have a point on T prime. Then if take the inverse image of that point and then you apply phi 1 then you end up in s and if you're a, or if you're of this form or you're of this form under the um, action of a Hecker operator you're called weakly special so these are rather interesting uh, varieties and the point is that if you're weakly special and you contain a CM point, then you're special. So, um, so if this is the Hecker orbit of a, uh, a CM point, then this means that Z has to be special and you're back to the Volfart case. So there are these rather sort of interesting things uh, going on as you look at, at more and more general functions, you get yourself into more and more uh, open questions in the theory of, of Shimura varieties. So, um, I think, so I think I'll stop there. And I just wanted to thank uh, the organizers on behalf of everybody for a wonderful school, which is not yet over. The big day is tomorrow. I realize that. So, okay. I think we should thank all these speakers, the speakers for this.